Hi, my name is William, and I want to thank you for taking this course. Let me show you some of the games that we're going to be making. The first one is called Road Rush. It's a game where we have to click on the roads to avoid obstacles. Not only is it a good game to get us started on the basics of Phaser, we'll also be making a reusable template to help us make games faster in the future. The next is Pong Frenzy, and while it might look like a simple game, it's a lot harder than it looks, and it's a great game to build to be able to learn the basics of physics in Phaser. And the last one we'll be making is a space battle game that introduces a lot of advanced game techniques. So let's get started building some games. So just a little bit about myself so you understand where I'm coming from as far as game code is concerned. I started making games in the early 80s, a long time ago in the dark age of programming. I've been making games professionally since 2001. I worked for a lot of different companies until in 2011, I wound up at Gaia Online. I was hired as a Flash developer and I made a lot of games and virtual worlds and other things in Flash. And then when Flash fell out of favor, I moved on to HTML5 using Phaser. And that's what we're going to be using today to make games. And over all these years, I've picked up a lot of tips, tricks, and techniques that I hope to be able to share with you in making this course and help you to have a great experience making games, not only better, but faster. So let's get started. We're just going to need a few tools to make our games. The first, of course, is a browser. I'll be using Chrome for its fine debugging features. We'll need a code editor, and there's a lot of great code editors out there, most of them free. You should find one that you're comfortable with. I'll be using Sublime Text. We need a local server to run the code. I'll be using XAMPP. We'll be getting the framework code from phaser.io, the official site of Phaser. We'll be using Phaser snippets from phasergames.com. And we'll be using artwork from opengameart.org. So let's go ahead and get set up. To run the code we're going to write, we need a local web server running on our machine. Now, if you've got some web space, you can use that too. I'm going to download a free program called ZAMP, and it's from apachefriends.org. And I'm going to be using the version for Windows, but they also have a version for Linux and Macs as well. And I'm going to grab the oldest version here because the oldest version is usually the most stable. And I'm going to download that right to the desktop. And I downloaded one earlier, and just double-click it to start the wizard. The one warning I usually get is about the antivirus program I'm running, because I'm running Norton. Now, I've never had a problem with this, so just go ahead and hit Yes. And also, I usually get a warning about user count controls. Again, I've never had a problem with it, so I hit OK. And it tells you it is ready to begin, so hit Next. I generally keep everything here checked because I do a lot of web development, so just use the defaults and push Next. Now this is the default path, see XAMPP on Windows. You can change that if you like, but if you do, if you're on a Mac or Linux, make sure you note where the address is because we're going to need that later. And just uncheck this right here. It'll tell you more about WordPress and such running on XAMPP, and we don't need that. So ready to begin, hit Next. And it generally takes about 10 or 15 minutes to install, so I'm going to go ahead and run to the next part so you don't have to sit here and watch it. If you like, you can go ahead and pause the video until the installation is complete. Make sure you do not uncheck this because it's going to launch the control panel, and we want to do that now. And we'll use English for the language. Let me bring this down where you can see it. And what we want to do is start Apache. Press the Start button. Status change to running. That's good. And when I go back to my browser, and I can type in HTTP slash slash localhost. And hit Enter. And it takes me to the XAMPP welcome page, so we know our server is up and running. 
Now that we have XAMPP up and running, let's go ahead and make some folders for a project. And we need to do that inside the XAMPP folder so we can run things on our local server. And on Windows, the path is C, XAMPP, and the folder htdocs is where we can put all of our project files. As you can see, I've already got a lot of folders in here already. But now let's make a new folder called Games. And we're going to make all the games for our course inside this folder. Let's start with a folder called Basic Template. Because instead of just making a game, we're going to be making templates, so later we can make games much faster. And inside that basic template folder, we're going to need a couple of more folders, one called JS, and we'll keep all of our JavaScript files in there. And we're going to need a folder to keep images. Great, now let's go back to our browser and type in localhost slash games. And there's our basic template folder with the subfolders inside of it. Now let's set up our files. One of the things we're going to need is the Phaser Library JavaScript file. And you can get that file at phaser.io, which is the official site of Phaser. And it's got a lot of great resources here, different blog posts and things that will help you learn about different aspects of Phaser. I've been lucky enough to get a post here now and then. And what we want to do here is click on this Download and Get Started button. And that'll take you to another page to click on the Download Phaser from GitHub. And then the file we want is right in the middle there, min.js. And I am just going to copy this path here from my folder. So we can download it to exactly where we need it. Paste that in and select the JavaScript folder and save. Now I'm using Phaser 390. The code in this course should be able to work with even future versions of Phaser, but sometimes things change. So if you have any problems, try using an earlier version. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the files we need to make our basic template. The first thing we're going to need is an index.html file to be able to load the JavaScript. So let's create that now. New file, index.html. And over at phasergames.com, I have some snippet code. It's right up there at the top, snippets. And what we want is phaser3 snippets. You'll see we also have phaserc snippets, but that is an older version of phaser. And phaser3 is the newest version. And we're going to want the starter snippets. And what we're looking for is the HTML file. Copy that and paste that code into our index.html. And what this is, is basically just bringing that JavaScript to the index.html to run the JavaScript. See, there's our JavaScript phaser library. And it also links in two other files, main.js and scenemain.js, which don't exist yet. So let's go ahead and create those now. We'll start with the main file. And what this file does is creates the game. Make a new file, main.js. And we're going to run this code in the onload function of the window, window.onload equals function. And do not do as I usually do and make the onload camel cased. It needs to be all lowercase. Equals function. And now we need a configuration or a config object. And that's an object that contains information about how to set up the game. And I've got a sample here on the site. Copy that snippet and paste it into your function. The first thing we need here is a graphics mode. And there's three choices here. We have phaser.canvas, which is a simple HTML5 canvas. We have WebGL, which stands for Web Graphic Library. And then there's the one I normally use, which is Phaser Auto. And that option lets the browser decide which mode to use. Next, we need to set the width and the height of the game. For width, we can use 480, and the game height, 640 pixels. And the next is the parent property, which I like to call the div tag name. 
because this allows you to place the game anywhere that you want in the HTML code. For example, if I go to index.html and make a div tag with the ID of phaser-game, this will allow me to place the game inside these tags. And all I have to do to put the game there is to copy the ID of the div tag and put it in the parent property of the config object. Next we need a scene, and every game has to have at least one scene. So in the scene we will write scene main in an array, and if we had another scene we could put that over here as well in the array like scene over. I like to think of scene as game screens for the game. A title screen, a game over screen, these would be the scenes. So let's create a scene main file in our JavaScript folder. And then we need to get a snippet called blank scene. Copy that and place that in your scene main.js. And then we have to pass the name of the scene inside that super. That will call the constructor in the parent with the name of our scene. And so we can use it later to refer to it or to change scenes. So always make sure that that string that you pass in to the super function matches the class name. And the last thing we need to do is actually create the game itself, and that is the game object. And I've got a snippet over there for that. Var game equals new phaser dot game with passing in that config file. But let's make the game a global object, and yes, we do need to be careful with our global objects, but in this case we're going to put the game up on the top so we can get to it from anywhere. Now if everything was done right, when we refresh we should see a blank game. And over here in the developer console, you'll see the word ready, which is logged out from the create function in scene main, and phaser gives us this nice little rainbow up here to let us know that everything's loaded. Now that we have our scene set up, let's have a look at some of the functions and what they do and how we can use them to help make the game. Now the constructor, as we know, will be called as soon as the class is created. So as soon as the screen comes into existence, that fires. Preload is where we can load all of our resources before we use them, such as images or sounds, for example. They can be loaded here in this function. The create function is used for defining objects such as our spaceships or bullets or anything like that. We can set those up here in the create function. The update function is a constant running loop. So anything that we need to check over and over, such as a collision, or if we need to constantly update something, that can be done here. And of course we can put in our own custom functions as well, so we can call those when we need them. I'd like to show you real quick how I use the debug tools in Chrome to help me write games. And the thing I do a lot is a console log. And what this does is simply sends a message to the developer console. And you can open the developer console by going over to the menu up top of Chrome here and going under More Tools and Developer Tools. You can also get there by pushing Control shift i or F12. And it's got several tabs here. The first is console, and there's our message logged out. I can also type any variable in there, like game, and it will spit out all the properties of that object. You can also put the variable, such as game, over here in the console log statement. Refresh, and there's our game object. You can also set watches, so I can add a variable, again like game, and then it will watch it, and whenever I want to refresh that, I push the little circle there, and it gives me an updated version of that object. Also, in the console section, it will show us if our code has any errors in it, and you'll know it right away because it will display them in bright red. 
Now that we've got a basic template set up, we can copy that to be able to make our games. Let's go over a couple of things that we're going to need to know in Phaser, such as adding images to the game. I'm just going to make a copy of this template right now and call it Scratchpad. That way we'll have a place to test things out as we go along, and we don't have to disrupt our game code to do it. And inside the Images folder of Scratchpad, I'm going to put an image, and you can find this image in the Lesson Resources. And I'm just going to copy this path here and put it in the Editor, Open Folder, and there's the face image there. Let's go into Scene Main, and the first thing we need to do is load the image in the Preload function. And there's a snippet for this under the Sprite Snippets. Preload an image, the first one there. Copy and paste that into your Preload function. This load image face, and then images face.png. And the formula for this is to put the key, the unique ID, in quotes as the first parameter, and the path to the image as the second. The next thing we need to do is to create that image. And that is the second snippet. Add an image. This face equals this add image, x, y, and key. And paste that into the create function. And in this case, the key is face. And I'll just put the X position at 100 and the Y position at 200. Save that and go to the browser. And then we need to open up the Scratchpad folder in the browser. Localhost Games, refresh, and there it is. Click on Scratchpad. And there's our face image. Now that we have the image on stage, we can do all sorts of things with it. For example, we can set the transparency of the face by saying this face alpha equals 0.5 to set it to a half fade. And the alpha will accept a value between 0 and 1, 0 being nothing and 1 being everything. So 0 0.05 will put it at 50% transparency. We can also change the rotation of the face by saying this face angle equals 45. We can change the size by saying this face scale x equals 0.5 and this face scale y equals 0.5. And that will set it to 50% of the original image. 0.25 is one quarter size of the original. And we can also change the width by saying this face display width equals 100, so we can set it to an exact number of pixels. And we can also change the display height by doing the same thing. And if we want to make that proportional, we can change the display width and then say this face scale y equals this face scale x. And then whenever I change the display width, whatever it's set to, it will always be proportional.